to welcome in the legendary American badass himself, John St. John, Duke Nukem. Oh, and you're not going to mention Big the Cat now, huh? Before we started the show, you wanted to talk about Big the Cat. Now it's all Duke Nukem. Good thing I brought this background with me. Who's Duke Nukem? (laughs) He's one badass motherfucker. I mean, you... Is this this a PG-rated show? Am I allowed to use... um, Oh, you can use whatever you want. Oh, okay. You'll edit it later. That's cool. All right. Oh, no. This is... uh, We are completely and utterly uncut. Oh, okay, then. Um, Are you... Then you're not Jewish, I take it. <laughs> no. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll act normal now and we can do this. All right. Then. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, I got to ask, what's it like voicing America's greatest hero? <laughs> Is that what you're calling him now? America's greatest hero? Oh, come um, on. We've loved him since what? 98, 97? Uh, well, for me, since 95 was when I first started, it was introduced to Duke Nukem and uh, 96 it was the release of 3D. Um, well, what's it like? It's, you know, it's really awesome. I got to be honest with you. Um, uh, it was really a lot of luck. There's obviously talent involved. I've been, you know, I was a radio broadcaster and using my voice since I was 14 years old to make a living, right? So, yeah, there, uh, there's talent I- involved, but... In every great gig that comes along for an actor, it's a lot of it is luck. You got to look at it as 50% luck, 50% talent. And and it's who do you meet at what time and where? So the casting for Duke Nukem 3D back in 1995 took place here in San Diego because Lonnie Manella was the casting director and she lives here. And I was a radio production director here in San Diego at that time. That means I was the guy who made all the commercials that ran on the radio stations I worked for, right? So she came in to do a voiceover for a uh, a car dealership. And while I was setting up her microphone, she was doing all these crazy voices. And I went, wow, you do, you got incredible range. You do a lot of voices. And uh, then I turned my mic on and I started doing wacky, crazy voices back at her. And she said, wow, you've got range and, and, and uh, uh, chops. And I've got this project coming up you might be interested in auditioning for. And I said, oh, okay, what's that? And I think... Uh, uh, it might have been Duke Nukem 3D or Big Red Racing or one of those really early games, Candyland, than I did back at the beginning of my uh, voice acting career. And um, it turns out that uh, she liked the way I sounded and wanted me to, to audition for this role for Duke Nukem 3D. So I, uh, I did. We got on the phone with George Broussard, you know, one of the creators of the character. He was in Plano, Texas, and we were on the phone together. And uh, I started uh, doing different voices for him. Um, and um, eventually we settled on the one I did and, and he loved it. And I was booked right there and I've been Duke ever since. And, and I got to tell you, thank goodness for the luck that's involved in the fact that I lived in San Diego, was in the right place at the right time. And I got that gig. Since then, it's been fantastic. I have fans worldwide, lots of them, way more than I ever thought played the game. And uh, they're all really nice people for the most part. And, you know, they like to come see me at conventions. And uh, and they a lot of them come on uh, my cruise. I have my own convention uh, called King Con Cruise. I don't know if you're aware of that. Um, and all of these things came to me because of the Duke Nukem voice. So the luck in being cast for it has made me feel very lucky over all the years. Very fortunate. That's how it feels to be the voice of Duke. Do you have any favorite lines? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you what's your favorite duke nukem line uh, tell me well, and i'll say it for you right a, now there's only a hundred don't have mm. time to play with myself i don't have time to play with myself wait looks like i do have time to play with myself wait a minute is that me playing with playing with myself <laughs> um sure. Uh, my favorite line, though, is is uh, was written by a woman. Um, if you didn't know this already, in Duke Nukem Forever, almost all of the lines were written by two women. <laughs> uh, one of them doesn't want me to mention her name. Uh, the other one doesn't mind if I do, but I'll just tell you it's two women. And and the one line they wrote that, that resonates with me the most, I don't know why, I, I'm a dork, is, I had eggs for breakfast. Your mom had sausage. <laughs> right? So that's my favorite line. It's funny. Uh, my son, who at the time when we did uh, Duke Nukem 3D was, I guess he was 
12 or 13 years old. He's he's 29 now, my son. Um, when we did Duke Nukem 3D, he, his bedroom was next to the room that was my studio in the house where we lived at the time, right? And he heard me recording the lines for Duke Nukem Forever, and he heard, he heard me do the line, something about, you know, you don't have to be a douchebag. Something like that. It had douchebag in it. And my son comes over, and he, and he knocks on the door real quietly. Dad? Yeah, come on in. I stopped recording. He goes, Hey, um, is that the Duke Nukem stuff you're doing? I said, yeah. He goes, uh, you know, we don't really say douche bag anymore. We use the term douche nozzle because it's the dirtiest part. <laughs> oh, dude, thank you for that. And my, my son and I kind of high-fived. He went back to his room. I recorded it and made it into the game. That's so awesome. you, you hear Duke use the term douche nozzle, which I'd never heard before my son said that. Uh, and, and it went into, that was back in 2010 when I was recording for Duke Nukem Forever or 2011. And uh, so my son had a line actually get in there. It helped add to the game in one way. Uh, I think my favorite Duke Nukem game is it's been so long since I played it because I don't have a PC like I used to anymore. They don't have the discs anymore. Uh, it's the beach one. I can't remember the name of it, though. Oh, um, um, gosh, I have it somewhere. <clears throat> um uh duke in the caribbean something caribbean yeah that's it yeah it was caribbean something i can't remember the exact title but yeah that was a fun one <laughs> i mean you get to go in the beach you kill sharks <laughs> it's amazing yeah pretty cool i mean i don't know me and my brother that was one thing we bonded about was playing duke nukem and see when the game came out i was about six years old so I was. oh going wow so i corrupted your morals from an early age did i yeah, well, he was about 10, so it doesn't help. And yeah, did I, you I, even know what, what Duke was talking about when he hit the space bar? And he went, shake it, baby. Did you even know what that was about? No, we didn't. We just thought it sounded <laughs> cool. And we hey, were going, look, pixelated tits. We were going at a Peace Christian school at the time. Oh, and Oh, my God. Exactly. At, at which... I go there and I just started saying, it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum, <laughs> but I'm all out of gum. And I would just start quoting and quoting it. I got in trouble for it. Like, Did you, like, did you have nuns at this school? Yes. There were oh. like a family of uh, conservative people. And they were like, why is he talking like that? What, what are you letting him play or watch? And, you must've freaked him out. Yeah. I mean, I was going around like, now I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this boy so angry? Oh, boy. My brother was a lot worse than me. He would go around quoting it, though, and he knew what half the things meant. Yeah, and I'm sure he thought it was funny seeing it in front of you because you were the little brother. Yeah. I had two older brothers. He did that stuff to me when I was young. Yeah, you know how older brothers can corrupt the mind of people. In fact, I think my brother is actually probably your biggest fan. He has so much Duke collection stuff. Is that, that right? It's, yeah, it's insane. He has the original PC games, never been opened in the box still. Mm -hmm. I mean, very cool. He, he saved on to the ones from childhood, too. You know what he doesn't have, though? And I guarantee it. What's that? That's my balls of steel, baby. That's one thing he doesn't have. I've got my two balls in my hand. I got these steel balls in my hand. Uh, that's a, a, a church song, I think. I've got the two balls in my hand. Okay, there you go. My, my balls of steel, by the way, are musical. They're very <laughs> wonderful sounding. Okay, I thought you might enjoy that. I take I them with me to conventions. <laughs> <laughs> give me your balls <laughs> i need a sack for them instead of a box right now the balls are in a box oh, yeah. they should be in a sack i, think I need they a ball a, sack i think they wrote a song about that you know uh except it was called like dick in the box or something oh i love that song um i wrote a song about uh, duke nukem years ago while i was at a convention in washington dc called magfest 
they had this uh, this uh, ballroom set up with a stage and instruments and amplifiers, and they called it Jam Space at this convention. And I'm a musician. I, I, I get paid professionally to sing and play, right? So um, I like to hang out at Jam Space at this particular convention. And one night I'm in there, and these guys come in. I think this guy Dom Cerchetti was like a keyboard player, and I was sitting at the drums or something, and a, a bass player wandered in. And we started doing like this one, four, five jam. And I started singing, I've got balls of steel. And, 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 and the tune kind of progressed to where I finally did a song, recorded a song called Balls of Steel. And um, I never released it, but it's kind of funny. Maybe I can uh, send it to you. You can tag it on at the end of this. Ooh, that would be nice. Put I'll it, look for it. I could have it as my opening. <laughs> there you go. And, and if it already played because it was your opening, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. That'll be great. You you can send it to me on what Facebook, um, or I can email it to you. Put in it, Dropbox or WeTransfer or Hightail or something like that. Which whichever is easier. I'm still having trouble with this new technology stuff. Wait, I'm the old fucker here. What are you talking about, you young whippersnapper? I lived with parents that didn't let me use technology based stuff. Oh, computers. you're Amish. I'm sorry. I, oh I yeah, didn't yeah. That. That's <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's or very close to it, right? Very, no, my mother is very, very strict. So she wouldn't let me mm -hmm. use a computer. My brother, he lived with our grandparents. Mm -hmm. There might be a reason for that. And uh, <laughs> what, what, what sense of freedom did you achieve when you moved out of mom's place? It must have been very liberating. I'm guessing. I was like, hey, I don't, I got, it. I know how to use a phone now. This Netflix <laughs> thing is amazing. Holding your phone up with your left hand behind closed doors? Wait, oh, okay. let's not go there. No, we, we <laughs> don't go that far. No, no, no. Uh, okay, now I get to ask about my favorite character you voice, mm -hmm. Big the motherfucking cat. So Big the cat really is your favorite character? No. no I mean, that that I voiced. Of, of the characters I voiced, Big really is your favorite? No. I just knew it would oh. aggravate you. Oh, no, it doesn't really. It's it's funny that people misunderstand. I have no issue with Big the Cat. I like the Big the Cat character. I think he's cute and adorable. Um, I don't like the voice I did for Big the Cat. And uh, I'll tell you how it happened and why that is the voice. Um, the same person who cast me for Duke Nukem 3D, Lonnie Manella, she was the casting director for Sega in San Diego at that time when we were doing Sonic Adventures. Um, I guess it was in the late 90s, mid to late 90s. Anyway, um, she called me at home one day. I was still, uh, uh, I was in between radio jobs at the time, as I recall. But she called me and she said, hey, we're, ha we're gonna record a session this Saturday down in Kearney Mesa uh, at this particular studio. Uh, and I have a part for you in a Sonic game. And I went, Sonic the Hedgehog? Because I was familiar. I'd never played the game, but I knew who Sonic the Hedgehog was because my son at the time who is, you know, he was 10, eight to 10 years old and his friends were all playing it on whatever platform was the thing at the time, right? Uh, a handheld of some kind. Um, and they love Sonic the Hedgehog. And and when I told my son I was going to be in it, he was like, cool, right? So I said, okay, so what, what part do you have for me? She goes, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll take care of that Saturday when you get here. And I said, you don't have any artwork for me or anything? She goes, ah, don't worry. We'll take care of that when you get here on Saturday. So I had no idea uh, what I was going to be cast as or whom I would be cast as. And, and I get down to the studio and I see uh, some people I know, Ryan Drummond and, and Jenny Doulard are, are, are in the booth recording stuff. When I walk in, I wave at them and, and Lonnie sees me and she comes out with a, a picture and a script. <laughs> and she flips this picture around as a picture of Big the Cat. And I went, what the hell is that? And she said, <laughs> yeah, she said, that's Big the Cat. And I said, big he is, but is that a cat? She goes, yes. And I said, okay, and he's got a fishing pole. And she goes, yeah, and he likes to go fishing with his friend Froggy, and they hang out and have adventures. Uh, okay. I said, that uh, that looks stupid. She goes, that's the point. He's kind of a big, dumb cat. So we're, we're going we're gonna to need a big, dumb voice for it. And I was like, thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> it's funny, too, because she had just uh, directed me in Duke Nukem 3D a few months before this, uh, within a year, I think. And... Um, 
so she knew, you, you know, I'm Duke Nukem voice. Why did she think I was going to be a good, stupid, big, fat cat voice? Um, whatever. I, I'm glad that I got the role. But when I walked into the booth, I put on my headphones. And as I recall, there was a, a director on the phone from Tokyo who spoke only Japanese. And there was an interpreter on the phone, too, I believe. And Lonnie is on the phone with them and in the booth on the other side of the glass from me, right? So I put this script up, and the picture is, you know, taped up on the, the window, uh, the glass in front of me. And and she turns on the mic. She goes, okay, John, let's go ahead and uh, let's uh, give him something to listen to. Okay. Um, Just make it stupid. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I can't find my froggy. He doesn't look so good. Have you seen my froggy? I start talking like this, and I hear Japanese in, in my in my headphone. And then and then Lonnie says to me, um, "They like it. That's the one." I went, "Wait a minute! I'm just warming up. Let me do a voice." And she goes, "No, no. They like that. That's Big the Cat voice." And it was just the dumbest thing that I could do from the very beginning. And I thought I could have made him sound, you know, not quite as, I don't know dumb i guess <laughs> he, he is a, he's slow he's very slow um but i made him sound just i don't know drunk a little bit i think and i i've always felt bad that i didn't get to do other takes other trials different styles for the big the cat character because as it turns out he became a a, a pretty beloved character which i was surprised at I, I you know he was a yeah, he was a side game that takes you off the damn trail for a while, you know, and and so I didn't think anybody would care about it. But you know what? To tell you the truth, when when Duke Nukem 3D came out, I didn't know anybody was playing it except me and my brother, who lived in Virginia, and we were playing it through a crappy uh, old style modem, dial up modem, right? And um, we thought the game was really cool, but I had no idea people were buying it or there were fans of Duke Nukem at all until had to be seven or eight years after the game came out in the early 2000s was when I learned that there was a following. And my brother called me one day and said, when did you get a Wikipedia page? Okay, and this is in 2000. I'm like, a wiki what? And, 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 I, and I look up Wikipedia and I type in my name and I'm like, holy crap, there's all this information about me. Where the hell did this come from? Well, gamers who obviously wanted to put all the stuff in and, and fill it out. Um, so there, it's not all true. Some things are not accurate on Wikipedia, by the way. Um, where were we? I'm sorry. I got off track. Oh, no, no, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm enjoying it, actually. Oh, okay. I, I don't mean to take all your time. I know you have questions scheduled, and I'm just rambling on and on. Oh, no. So. Bas basically, that's what I do is ramble in these interviews if you watch them. <laughs> okay. Just... It, we're just conversing then. Okay, good. I'm going to be much... comfortable. It's like having a beer and just chilling out talking about stuff. That's pretty much how Dig these it. interviews work. <laughs> Indeed. Unless you don't drink. Oh, I, I drank. I think I think you probably know that. Is that why you mentioned it? That there's something I do like to drink in particular? What would that be? Uh, that would be Patron Silver Tequila is my jam. Everybody <laughs> has their favorite drink. That's mine. And I shoot it. Because I like the way it tastes when I shoot it, and I like the effects come on quickly when I shoot it. I'll have to write that down and give that a whirl. I know you post it on your social media quite a bit once in a while. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's like eh, I'm going to have to try that one of these days. Well, you should. It's it's smooth. Keep it in your freezer. It doesn't freeze. Uh, get a nice cold ice shot of tequila, and uh, you'll enjoy yourself. Oh, Trust I'll, me. Have to, I'll have to remember that one. <laughs> that way, you know, whenever I'm on the floor again or spinning, you know, somebody can pick me up. Oh, on the don't floor don't drink the... too many, man. And pace yourself. You have to have a limit. We all know what our limits are. I have my limits on tequila shots. Well, I'm not allowed any more than ten in an hour because uh, that's way over the top for me. Unless you've got Irish blood, then you know you're set for life. No, nope, no, nope. not me. <sighs> me either. The Irish are lucky. <laughs> I think I'm lucky because I, I can get drunk as fuck and I've never had a hangover from drinking tequila. If I don't mix anything else with it, and I don't, I only drink tequila and water when I'm drinking, and I'm never hungover ever, no matter how fucked up I get. Quit bragging. 
You know, I think it could be true for anybody. The reason I drink tequila, I used to drink other liquors back prior to 2007 or eight, I guess, was when I was diagnosed with type two diabetes. And I, my doctor and I were talking and, and talking to a nutritionist about, you know, what I can and can't eat and blah, 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 blah. And I went, great. I guess I don't get to drink anymore either. And he goes, not necessarily. <laughs> uh, Tequila is made from the agave plant. It's a different type of sugars that it produces. And it doesn't affect your diabetes much. So much. I started drinking tequila and really enjoying it. Now I enjoy many different types of tequila for sipping. But when I'm partying at conventions uh, or over the holidays with friends and we just want to get a buzz on, Patron Silver, whoop, right down it goes. So good. So my next question is, what do you remember about playing the Trash Man from Twisted Metal? Oh, um, about that character in particular, not much, because I'm pretty much all of the characters in the game. Uh, I'm General Warthog, and I'm uh, I'm Sweet Tooth Spokes Clown, which was a, a very challenging part for me, believe it or not. Ralph Jones, um, gosh, I can't remember all of the characters now, but uh, Rob Zombie, I'm all of those in that game. So I don't particularly remember that character, but you do for some reason. Uh, why is that? I used to pick him a lot. Did you? Yeah, Twisted Metal 4. I used to pick the character a lot and race with him. I was actually pretty good with him. Did, did it remind you of like a National Lampoon's Vacation or something? The family in the station wagon? Wasn't that yeah, him? Pretty much, so, yes. So, so is that it? Is there some tie into family vacations and stuff from your, your childhood? Is that why you like, what was it, Ralph Jones? <laughs> yeah. I think was his name? Well, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's about why. I mean, my cousin was a huge Twisted Metal fan, so he had all the uh -huh. games. Mm -hmm. And... I had to, you know, be forced to play him. And Trash Man was one of the ones I would pick a lot. And he cool. hated it when I picked him. <laughs> you know, I don't recall my kids playing any of the games I was in except Twisted Metal 4. They seemed to love it because it's a multiplayer game where you're trying to take somebody else out. My kids were very competitive with each other. At least my two oldest, my my, my oldest daughter and my son. Um they they loved playing that game uh, and never played any of my other games. I, I don't think my son even ever looked at Duke Nukem before, you know, because he's you know he's so much younger that it was uh, hot and gone by the time he was even born, basically. So, oh well, God, Duke is so old now. Yes, but he's like one of the greatest patriots of all time. The true, American. I would I would agree with that. Yes. I mean, that that was the character that people strive to be when it came to video games. Yeah. And, you know, it, what, what's amazing to me about Duke Nukem is the longevity of this character, the popularity of Duke Nukem, because he hasn't had a game in over a decade. Duke Nukem Forever was the last Duke Nukem game made in 2011. Okay, so now it's been, what, 11 years, right? And yet... I'm still invited to conventions around the world, and I just finished a huge project in which I talk like this all the way through the project. And because there's NDAs, I can't tell you what it is, but you will hear about it within just a few weeks. It's going to be a pretty big thing. Um, so to this day, I'm still doing the Duke voice. I have a cameo account and a memo account where uh, fans have me say happy birthday to their, you know, my dad got me into Duke uh, Nukem. Please say happy birthday to him. So I'll record in the Duke voice, you know, birthday greetings, happy anniversaries, uh, all kinds of different things. To this day, I'm still every week recording something in the Duke Nukem voice um, for profit. I mean, as part of my job. And I just think that's so freaking cool. After all these years, a character who hasn't even had a relevant game in years uh, is still this popular. That makes me the luckiest guy in voiceover, I think. I mean, it's kind of like with some animes. Some anime characters never die out, so. Yeah, that's true. Many of my uh, my my close voice acting friends are anime actors, and they they feel the same way. They feel so lucky that their characters got popular, and, and that's why we all appear at conventions together. I mean, there's a whole lot of voice actors doing video games and anime and such, but if, if it's an additional role, if it's soldier number three or whatever, if it's not a lead role, 
they're not really getting invited to these conventions and and selling autographs and and meeting fans in the same way uh you get to do if you get a lead role you know a starring role in in a, a game or an anime um i think they would all agree with me there's a lot of luck and and we're all very lucky to be doing this so besides duke what would you say your favorite character is that you voiced <laughs> What would the favorite be? I think uh, right now I'm I'm very happy with the Postal Four dude. I'm the dude, the new dude voice in Postal Four. Uh, apparently now you can play Postal Four with the original Rick Hunter voice, and and the 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 other voice actor I forget his name who was I think in Postal Three, the one that bombed. Um, you can now play in their voices or in my voice, which um, I guess is cool for gamers. Kind of sucks for me, <laughs> to be honest with you. I thought I was the new voice of Postal Dude, but now you can play any of the three voices who've been in the game as the dude while you're playing. So, but I I, I like the way I played that role. The reason I was cast for it uh, is twofold. Um, here's a short story. Uh, the original voice actor of Claptrap in Borderlands is a, a fellow named David Eddings, and he's a personal friend of mine. We go back a few years. Uh, and David Eddings is friend friends with uh, uh, Mike Schachter with Running with Scissors, the guys who make Postal, right? So uh, Schachter and Eddings are talking, and and Schachter says, "I need somebody just with a snarky ass voice to play uh, Postal Dude for the four game. Uh, got anybody in mind?" And Eddings goes, "Oh yeah, John St. John, my friend. He's he's snarky as hell." <laughs> his tone of voice sounds like he doesn't give a shit half the time. So talk to him. And so Mike Schachter calls me or texts me or pokes me on Facebook or messenger, whatever we made contact. And, and, and he said, Hey, David Eddings wants me to say hi. I said, Oh, that's nice. Nice. And nice to meet you. I said, what can I do for you? And he said, well, we, we got this game coming out. We're wondering if you'd be interested in voicing for it. And, and he said it was postal. I went, Oh, that came out way back when Duke Nukem came out. He goes, yeah, yeah. Same era. Um, what I didn't know at the time is that Postal was the game that was banned in Australia and I think a few other countries because it was just ridiculously over the top violence, the kind of violence that's just so stupid. You laugh at it because it's so unrealistic. I mean, the silencer on, on his shotgun is a cat. Come on. That's just, that's just stupid shit. You have to laugh at that. It's not you know, unbelievable. Right. Um, so I went, oh, yeah, yeah, you're the game that was uh, that was uh, canceled out in a couple of countries. He goes, yeah, that's in the past. So we want to do this thing. Everybody yeah, everybody accepts what we do, what we are and what we do now. Do you want to be the voice? I went, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And, and so he had me audition doing different styles of voices, and nothing was really clicking. And he wrote back, and he goes, you, you, we're not really feeling it yet. And I said, what are you looking for exactly? And he said, a snarky son of a bitch kind of guy who you, you feel like he doesn't give a shit. He's apathetic as hell. And, and you can hear it in his tone of voice. And I said, you mean, you don't hear that in my regular speech patterns. <laughs> don't I sound like that snarky son of a bitch? He goes, you know what? Yeah. Would you mind auditioning again and just use your normal voice? I went, okay, be happy to, because I've never used my regular voice in any video game ever. It's always been put on some character, right? Not this, what you're getting right now. And so this is Postal Dude, because uh, I'm a snarky sounding son of a bitch. And, and it, it was so easy to do because I, I'm just looking at this. It's not even acting for me to do Postal Dude. I'm just reading the script, and it sounds the way it's supposed to, apparently. Um, so they got the snarky asshole they wanted. That's me. I'm Postal Dude for Postal Dude, Postal 4. Yeah. Now, I heard this rumor, and this may just be a rumor. I thought there was supposed to be a Duke Nukem movie. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, that's not a rumor. I've actually seen the script for it, believe it or not. Um, um, there were discussions. Paramount, I think, was the parent company who was going to do the thing with uh, an agreement that Michael Bay was going to direct it. <laughs> Go figure. And John Cena in the role of Duke Nukem. Um, <laughs> I think, I think a lot of stuff fell through the cracks. Well, John Cena has the closest look to Duke Nukem today. You know, if any actor out there, he's got the look. I think he kind of, uh, he did too many kiddie projects and, and he's not, 
badass enough and he doesn't sound like this either and duke's attitude a lot of it was in the voice right yeah so um yes there there were talks of doing it um at this time i think it's all fallen apart they're not even worried about it they're more focused on doing borderlands the movie which they've been working on and i guess will be released who knows when whatever <laughs> i don't know my hope dude about uh, a Duke Nukem movie would be that it would be an R-rated CG movie, and I'd do the voice of Duke. Uh, it's not just about me getting the job and the money and the accolades. It's more about being true to what the Duke Nukem character is. And I think if they did it CG, and I mean, look how good CG looks in films today, right? Any Marvel movie blows your mind by what's happening in front of your face. Right. So why couldn't they make a CG high quality CG R rated frickin Duke Nukem movie and make fun of the fact, uh, for instance, that uh, Duke is uh, an outdated character where he's a, he's a he's a he's a chauvinistic, misogynistic character who use that man. Give him a sidekick who goes, oh, Duke, you can't say that shit today. You know, where you've been living on Mars? Maybe. <laughs> you know, and, and and give him a sidekick like his son. Did you know that Duke Nukem has a son? It's been so long since I played. No, I didn't know that. Well, not in the video games, but in a web series that an Italian friend of mine posts oh. on Facebook regularly. Uh, Duke Nukem Vengeance of a King. And um, this uh, artist cartoonist uh, is a friend of mine on Facebook. And she reached out to me and she said, if Duke Nukem had a son, what would his name be? And in one second, I responded, Deuce. <laughs> He'd be <laughs> Deuce Nukem, the second, junior, whatever you want to call him. And it sounds like Deuce Nukem. Cool name for Duke's son. So imagine Duke and Deuce in a CG R-rated film where, where Deuce is trying to get Duke to, to, to come into modern times and not get canceled, right? Uh, to be more woke or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and Duke uh, teaching Deuce uh, how to get women yeah how to be a the r rating for art for language and nudity and all that stuff that goes with an r rating to the max all the way up to the edge of being x-rated and it, what a cool ass movie that would be do you agree oh yeah his son could be played by a very neurotic actor nicholas cage no wait he's too old <laughs> what am yeah, I talking way about? too old somebody, yeah, yeah. somebody real neurotic young ish but I can't yeah. think of anyone. Uh, let's do. Yes, you can say it. You, you got somebody in mind. Oh, I've got several people in mind. Uh, I would actually say Robert Eiler from The Sopranos, who played uh -huh. AJ. I mm -hmm. think he would be a very good neurotic character, and he would actually kind of come off because he's already played a badass the son before in The Sopranos. So right, why not play a badass the son in Duke Nukem? Mm -hmm. And he was just in the commercial for the Sopranos uh, electric car. So, yeah. yeah, he'd be like, Dad, you can't talk like that here. He's like, mm -hmm. you, you've been out of my life for 30 years and now you want to just come back into it. Oh, I was getting pussy, son. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting laid all the time. What were you doing? <laughs> it's like, do you even remember mom's name? <laughs> no. <laughs> Also, uh, Big the Cat's not the only Sonic character you voiced. You also played E Omega, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, that was that was a, a non acting gig, to be honest with you. And uh, they didn't use effect on that voice, as I recall. They just had me read in a robotic monotone, which means I was only speaking like this. And frankly, this is not acting. This is simply reading. That's what no emotion saying. to express whatsoever. E one two three Omega is my name. I only spoke like this, right? See, now if they make a good sequel to Sonic Three, and they bring Big the Cat back. Would you come back mm -hmm. for Big the Cat? Oh, they the would movie? never have me, but hell yeah, I would. No, they'd steal the role from me and probably give it to I don't know Kyle Abair or somebody. Like, well, Kyle, I don't know. You guys are about on the same page, aren't you? Well, we were both Big the Cat. I mean, when I when I didn't get recast and he did, and I love Kyle A. Bear, don't get me wrong. Oh, There's yeah. no animosity here. He's a great big teddy bear friend of mine. I love him much. Um, but 
Uh, it, it hurts when a character gets taken away from you and given to somebody else. But then while Kyle was the voice of Big the Cat, they Sega killed off Big the Cat. I mean, not literally, but they said, okay, no more Big the Cat. So um, I don't see them bringing Big the Cat back for any movie for any reason. Uh, it doesn't serve any purpose. But if they did it and they wanted the original voice of Big the Cat, which I think I was the original voice of Big the Cat, hell yeah! <laughs> Are you kidding? In a heartbeat, I'd love to be the voice of Big the Cat again. Well, nowadays they do the irritating thing. When they make a movie about a popular franchise, they change the cast entirely, like uh, trying to think. Like with Sonic. Well, Sega you know? is the best example. I mean, from game to game to, to, to animated series to the movies, they change the cast over and over and over and over again. Nobody gets to maintain the role that they started. <laughs> What aggravated me with Sega is they should have had a way for all the actors that played Sonic to play in Sonic Generations. Mm, like they yeah. could have had Ryan in there. They could have had, uh, you know, Jason Griffith, which he was already in there. And yeah, they could have had you in there. They could have had Thank Jalel you. White as, uh, what do you call it? The original Sonic, but they chose not to for some yeah, reason. Yeah. So it's also kind of a slap in the face, I think, to directors who uh, who previously uh, cast people like me in the thing. And then the next director goes, no, that's not the right voice. I know who the right voice is and cast somebody else. It's it's not just a slap in the face of the actors who lose the gig to other actors, but but also to the, the casting directors and or directors who chose. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. Huh? Like with when they were talking about you know, making a Duke Nukem movie. I think the movie, if there was going to be a live action Duke, I wouldn't pick John Cena. I'd go back to the 90s and pick Arnold. I mean, that's pretty much who he's designed. Well, you after. can't. Arnold's too old, unless you're going to, you know. Go back to CG the 90s. And if you're going <laughs> to CG it, make make me the Duke Nukem well, in the movie. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. I can't stand when they change voices, when they're, it's like, well, we're going to get this new movie out about the game franchise. Let's change all the voices. Yeah, when it's something you grew up with, that uh, kind of a slap in the face to you, too. You don't get to hear it the way you remember growing up playing the game. You don't get the same voice if they recast it. That kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, th there are a lot of uh, castings out there for sound alikes too. I, I often don't do them unless I think I have a spot-on impression. I don't uh, audition for those because I don't care for the replacement voices that come in on shows that I grew up with. So specifically, we're going back to, you know, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and uh, those th cartoons that were popular when I was a kid. Um, there are a lot of great voice actor imitations out there, but none of them sound exactly like Mel Blanc. And if no, it isn't was, Mel Blanc's voice, it's just not the same to me. The man of a thousand voices for a reason. Yeah, I mean, man. he was he was amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's my opinion, too. I mean, they they tend to change voices a lot with characters as the show goes on, and that always drives me nuts. Yeah. Especially when you have OCD about things. It's like, well, that's not the way I originally heard it, so I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't like change. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, who are your top five favorite characters that you play? Well, Duke Nukem is at the top of the list. Postal uh, dude, I, I like. Um Big the Cat has to be in there. The he Sweet Tooth to. Spokes Clown from Twisted Metal 4, because that's so memorable, and that was my impression, my bad impression of, um, what was his name, John is it Kazarinsky? The guy who originally did uh, the uh, Crypt Keeper from HBO's Tales of the Crypt. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, John Kazar. Yeah, I know who you're talking oh, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was my bad impression of him. Um, I think that's five. Um, I think those are the top voices for me. The most memorable ones. Um, I'm, you know, I'm like the drill instructor in uh, Counter Strike Global Offensive, and I've got a bunch of characters in games like Guild Wars Two and Dota Two, where I'm five or six characters in each of those games. Um, but a lot of them are uh, kind of takeoffs of other characters, like uh, Axe, for instance. I don't know if you're familiar with Dota Two, but I play this big red character with a giant axe named Axe, and Axe just talks like this. Axe is Axe. And and so not a memorable character for me because his scripting is uh, kind of like Big the Cat. Dumb lines, nothing really 
smart or funny or or stolen like Duke's lines were all stolen from Evil Dead and you know yeah. like that. Yeah, from Bruce Campbell and Rowdy Roddy Piper, uh, which I, I I think that that's funny. I think people like the fact that oh, he's stealing lines from Hollywood and everything in the Duke Nukem games was it, his stuff is memorable because of that. Uh, the twisted metal spokes clown uh, memorable because of uh, my memory of it was so much vocal stress by the end of the session. I couldn't work for two days after that because my voice was shot like this. Right. <laughs> Uh, I had to give up work for a couple of days because of uh, that game. So I'll always remember that character. And when I, when I hear the, uh, the the components from the game, the intro that I read, and uh, the parts at the end where you win, you know, if you win the game when he comes out to congratulate you, um, I'm impressed with my voice acting in that game uh, because it was vocally very stressful. But I was in that character. I was that. I was channeling something from the depths of hell when I did that character that worked. And, and I'm, it's, that's one of my favorite bodies of work listening to that, that, and also Candyland, the original Hasbro CD-ROM Candyland game, where I'm most of the male, uh, I'm all of the male cast, except for King Candy, who was played by, uh, I think it was Jeff McNeil. Somebody like that played King Candy, but I'm all of the male cast in that one. And hearing those clips, uh, which I can't anymore. I mean, uh, that CD-ROM won't play in my computers anymore. <laughs> um, that would be fun to hear again because uh, when you have your own characters interacting with each other or you're the whole cast and, and, and every character that pops up like Lord Licorice, uh, I remember doing that voice. And, oh, you're not going to be so lucky this time, cookie boy. You know, that was the way I spoke in that character. And, and the script was so cute and the characters looked like my voice matched them just right. Um, that'll always be a favorite for me too, even though it's, you know, historic now. What is that game? 30 years old, whatever. There's nothing wrong with being 30. 30 <laughs> Except 30 in months. video game land where people yeah. forget you over time. Yes. Lost in time. Lost like in time. Tears, like tears and rain. In a world where you're lost in time and lost in space. Oh yeah. Anyway, I want to say thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Is there anything you want to say before we close out? Uh, sure. If you want to go on a unique fan adventure on your next vacation, uh, I have a, a, a cruise convention called King Con Cruise. You get to sail with the king, baby. Uh, me and my voice actor friends who come along. I've had uh, Wes Johnson, DC Douglas, um, John Patrick Lowry, Ellen McLean, um, so many different voice actors come on my cruise. And 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 as a uh, fan who comes on the cruise to vacation for a week, you could have adventures with the guests. So like I go kayaking with you and I'll go snorkeling with you. I'll climb the rock wall with you. We'll have laser tag adventures and, and, and a drunk mini golf tournament, which we have a trophy for. Um, it's called King Con Cruise. It's on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship from Orlando, Florida to the Bahamas and back. We even stop at Royal Caribbean's private island, uh, Coco Cay, which is where you have the perfect day. They have a giant water theme park there and pristine beaches where you can rent a cabana, which is what I'm doing this time, and hang out on the beach all day in your private cabana where uh, the stewards keep bringing out drinks to you and stuff while you just tan, right? Um, it's called King Con Cruise. It's a whole lot of fun. It's not expensive. It costs about the same as going to a land-based convention where you have to pay for a hotel and all your food. Remember on our cruise, all of your food is free all the time. So check out King Con Cruise. Our website right now says that we uh, were postponed for a year. Um, I personally postponed my, my cruise convention uh, this past March, just weeks ago because of COVID. I didn't want to risk anybody getting on a cruise ship at a time when it seems like this is not quite over yet. So we're postponed to next March, March 27th. Uh, I'm sorry, February 27th through March 3rd next year. It, when, when the weather sucks where you are and it's freezing cold, you can come with us to the Bahamas where it's 80 degrees on a cruise ship party. That's more fun than you can imagine. And my guests for next year are DC Douglas, Wes Johnson, and, um, um, oh gosh, I just, I'm brain farting right now. Um, 
Isn't it a married couple? Yes, it's a couple. Oh, oh yeah, Richard Epcar, the voice of the Joker, and his wife Ellen Stern, um, who's a voice actor director as well. They're my other guests. So you get to you could play laser tag with the Joker, the voice of the Joker, if you wanted to. Um, on KingConcruise.com. Go ahead and log on right now. You can not register because the website is I'm just rebuilding it now. It'll go on in another couple of weeks, maybe by the time this is on for everybody. And um, come along on an adventure of a lifetime. All right. I'll put the link in the description. www.kingconcruise.com. Thank you. You rock. I love your podcast. <laughs>